So hey, come welcome back uh, for book 34. Yes, we are pumped today. Uh, today, <laughs> if anybody is listening, is uh, mark the mark the words. You don't know what's happening in the background right now, but today uh, is a is a big day for Clubney. So um, we will uh, we're going to be kicking off a new a new idea and journey very soon. And uh, true true knows what I'm talking about, but more details to come in the future. But uh, right now, I'm super pumped and uh, excited to talk about this today. But um, yeah. look, first things first, let's let's do our let's do our let's, let's do, do our a, work, let's do right? a book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me share my screen. So today's book is book number 34. It's a book that is called Thirst, a story of redemption, compassion, and a mission to bring clean water to the world by the author Scott Harrison. Um, my reflection title, which I will get to, well, I'll do a quick recap of the book. Uh, by the way, did, did you read this one? I, don't, I can't remember if you did. No, I did not. Okay. Um, so quick quick recap of the, the story, the book itself, like what's it about? So um, uh, at 28 years old, Scott Harrison was a, a, a um, he was a club promoter. Um, he, he, he wanted to be a musician at first. And then, you know, eventually somehow he ended up like partying, he moved to NYC and he ended up, you know, just partying a lot and he met a lot of famous people and he ended up becoming a pretty, um, a pretty uh, like well-known club promoter. And uh, which, you know, for him, it was pretty awesome when you were in your like, early twenties and you're like hanging out with models and, you know, popping bottles all day long and doing drugs and staying out until 4am. And, you know, he, he thought he was living the life. Right. Um, and he, I mean, to some, some people's you know, mind, he, he may have, uh, eventually, you know, like all things, when you go to excess, you know, it, um, it, it wears out. Right. And for Scott, it started to wear out when he was 28 years old. And he, um, uh, you know, he just, he just wasn't feeling the, the nightclub scene anymore. They went on this trip down to like, I can't remember. It was like Paraguay or Uruguay or something like that, or some some South American country for for New Year's Eve. And I don't know. He he started to have like these like um, just you know thoughts about bigger things and and wondering what his life was going on. And and um, and then right after that, when he came home, he uh, um, uh, accidentally uh, ruffled the wrong feathers with somebody in his industry, and the guy you know threatened to kill him, and he was chasing him around the city. So he was kind of like in hiding, um, and he. He told one of his buddies, like, I got it. his his partner in the club promotion business. Like, I got I just got to get out of here. I got to, you know, go lay low. So he called one of his friends um, uh, that he had become friends with, uh, an old musician friend of his that had a had a place in, in France. And he went to France and kind of lay low for a while to try to figure out what he wanted to do. Eventually, he just kind of had this epiphany of like, you know, this isn't the life that I want to live. And I want to, I want to, he, he, I think he says in the book, I asked myself, like, what would you do? if you could be the exact opposite of who you are right now, like, what would that look like? You know, like who, who could you, who would I be? Um, so that kickstarted him to volunteering to go in on these uh, mercy medical ships. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of those, the, the mm -hmm. ones that like, you know, travel around the world and, and um, go to different parts of Africa and, you know, help people with medical issues that are have in remote areas. So he, um, he went there as like a photographer and like a kind of a social media kind of guy um, back in the, I think this is in the nineties or something like that, or maybe early two thousands. And, um, he, uh, that was what he did. So he took pictures and he, you know, shared them on, on like website stuff. And, and, um, and as he did this, he started to learn a lot of these people's stories, um, started to learn where they were from, uh, started to learn more about Africa and, um, you know, changed his life. He, uh, he came back home from this after a couple of years of doing it. And he was like, I, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a different person and I have a different perspective. My paradigms mm -hmm. have shifted and he wanted to do something good with his life. So he wanted to start a charity, um, just like he had been on and, um, and he wanted to, um, find where he could, you know, um, dedicate his life to. And, uh, he remembered back to some of the, some of the villages in Africa that he went to and, and learning about their, their water shortage issues and, and clean water crises, um, that they had that he had no idea of. And he saw this one guy putting in a well and, he thought, you know what, like maybe I can help with, uh, with, with bringing clean water to these places and building wells. So he started a charity called, um, called charity water. And, um, he, uh, you know, specifically focused in on trying to bring clean water to, uh, and building wells and things like that all over Africa. So he started raising money, uh, used a lot of his, his club promotion connections and business and stuff like that to, uh, to, to, to grow that, that audience and to grow the charity and to grow, you know, um, uh, fundraising dollars and things like that to continue to do this. 
and throughout the rest of the book, he talks about, you know, that work that, that, that meaningful work um, that he was, was doing and felt fulfilled and felt like he was doing good stuff and with his life and helping people. And um, toward the end of the book, he actually, um, well, here, let me, uh, that, that's, that's kind of the book in general at, at a high level. Um, so my, my reflection title is, is don't be afraid of work that does not end. Um, and I'll, and I'll explain to you what that means in relation to this book. So, um, the day that I was, I was listening to this on an audio book, like I do a lot of my books. And, um, it was, it was a really hot summer afternoon. Um, uh, last summer I was out in the, uh, um, the yard doing yard. I have a huge yard and I have to do a lot of yard work and landscaping and stuff like that. So I was out in the yard for like four or five hours on like a really hot, sunny summer day. It was 85 degrees. I was just pouring sweat. Like, and, um, and I went to go up to my patio cause I'd put like a little Gatorade squirter bottle up there, you know, for some water whenever I got tired. And, and I was literally listening to this book as I was doing that. And I just was like squirting the, the Gatorade bottle into my mouth and watching the stream of water come down. And I was like splashing it all over my face and spitting it out on the ground and chugging more and chugging more. And, you know, I had this like, like this moment of like, holy shit, I'm privileged. Like, you know, I'm listening to these stories of these people that have to walk three hours in Africa for, for a drink of clean water. And they, they, the, the amount of water that I was squirting in my mouth is maybe all the water they have for the entire day after they walk three hours for it, you know, each way to, to be able to bring it back to their, to their family. And, and um, you know, I, I've just, I just, I didn't even know that there was water shortages of things like this in the world. And for me personally, I was, it was just, eye-opening and as I was you know kind of having that paradigm shifting moment I um uh, uh you know started to 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 started to started to like you know feel the feel the story like really hard um and uh um eventually though that so that was an eye-opening experience in the book also an eye-opening experience in the book was was Scott Harrison's story the 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 founder of this you know where he was living a one completely different life and then all of a sudden like you know he he went on this trip and found a mission and a purpose and he felt fulfilled and in a, in a meaningful life. And, um, uh, and that's something that I've been on a similar journey for, for the past couple of years with, with my daughter, you know, she showed me my own meaning and purpose and, um, and, and work that I shouldn't be afraid of. And at the end of the day, this is all about, you know, life's all about meaningful work, you know, and, and at the end of the book, Scott said something that really stuck with me and just really, really resonated hard with me. He said, you know, do not be afraid of work that does not end. You know, uh, for me, that's meaningful work, right? I think we're so trained in our life to go from project to project or company to company, or, you know, what's your next career move or going up a corporate ladder or whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we, um, we, we forget about the work. The work's important. Meaningful work is important and, uh, and meaningful relationships are important. And, you know, that stuff can be scary sometimes, but uh, at the end of the day, like if it's meaningful, don't be afraid of work that doesn't end because that there's a, there's a reason why it's meaningful to you. And there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel for it. So um, that's, uh, that's the reflection at a high level. Love to get your thoughts. Okay. So for me, I like to uh, add a qualifier to the reflection title for me. Um, for me, it's like, don't be afraid of work that does not end. Right. So mm-hmm. to, to add that to that is, 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 oh, is the yeah. work that you, that you are excited about the work that you are inspired yes. to do versus yes. the work that does not end. For example, somebody, people, they sit in the cubicle for yeah. 40, 50 years. It doesn't end until they die. And so yeah. that's to me, I don't want people to get the, the, fair. the <laughs> mistake of, of saying, well, <laughs> I hate my job. Uh, I hate doing these things. These things, it, it's just a lot of, uh, nonsense uh, reason why I have to do this. Why do I have to write, uh, you know, a report on why, you know, we shouldn't use this uh, vendor versus another vendor, right? Right, right. If you say, well, if if you decide that you don't want to use the vendor, why do you need a report to say why don't why the reason why you don't want to use a vendor? Yeah, for example, and that yeah. these is just nonsense work that uh, will put you over the edge. <laughs> right, right. And yes, so good, if, good if, clarification. If you embrace the suckness, is the suckness of, of this, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be terrible. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and to me, it's like, don't be afraid of work that does end because it, in a way, when you, when you have meaningful work, like, you know, the question you're asking, are you running away uh, or at your meaningful work? To me, that's a, a, an obvious question. 
and it's an obvious answer just because you would never run away from meaningful work. No. Meaningful work is something that you enjoy so much that you will feel sad to see the day when it's ended. Yes. Like you, you, you in, in love for the first time or you playing um, whatever game that's your favorite game, right? You don't want the game to end. You want to have the, the, the joy, the happiness, the fun of it. Right. And so if it's meaningful work, uh, there's no, there's, there's no reason why you're running away. If you have any hesitation as far as work is enjoyable or meaningful for you, it's not. Agreed. It's either, it's agreed. either it's like, you know, yes, you know, this, this is it, right? You, you know, you know, when you see it to me, that's meaningful work. Every day, true that you and I get to talk to each other and to go through our our club and journey together. Like I'm excited, like and it's, it's right, fun. exactly. It's, you're it's always, exhilarating. You're always I am not afraid of doing you know, this until we're ninety. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's that's the reason you know meaningful work when you see it, right? And when you see it, it's it's so much enjoyable because you want to do you you want to have more time to doing it. You say, hey, let me live a little bit longer so I can continue doing it for more years. Versus, hey, you know. When does it end so that I can stop and, and not have to do it anymore? So that's a big difference. So for me, it's very obvious. That there's no, but, there's but it's no not. Confusion. It's not. It's there's obvious no, now. It no, is no, hard. No, no, no. I'm, I'm yeah. saying. I'm saying. I, if 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 it's if you have any doubt about whether some work is meaningful, True. it's not. You're you're 100 right about that. Like I mean I. Um, you know, our, our purpose at clubbing and what you and I are trying to do is to, uh, find balance in our own lives and to, and to help others to discover balance in their own lives and to, and to live a life of purpose. Right. To I find mean, meaningful like, work because, yeah. because what I do, what I do that I really like, I don't know. I spend every minute of it, uh, doing it. <laughs> right. I mean, you're going to have to try to drag me away from it say hey you know you need you need you need the, the other stuff you need, you need your sleep you need your your break you know because i'm too addicted to the the, the kind of things i do so yeah like i say you know it when you see it and 100%. if you have any doubt or you thinking hey is this meaningful work it's not and That's you know a- it's it's don't be afraid if you don't have that feeling yet either keep searching that's what the whole that's, that's what the point of the journey is. It's the point of the core values quest is that we have people go on. That's what the yes. point of our own quest that we're on right now is to find what is that meaningful work? That, what is your purpose? What is your why? What is your motivation? What is all these things that, that all lead to meaningful work and meaningful relationships where you are energized by it? Mm-hmm. But if you're sitting in your office right now and, and you are you are going, well, shit, that's not me. That's that's not my job. That's not what I do. Like, you know, I don't know how I could find that. Like, if you I mean, have I, to wonder, it's not. And so if you have to ask, you know, if you have to tell yourself, you know, don't be afraid of some work, then that's not the work that you want. You want to start looking for something else. Exactly. But you can find meaningful work, just like Scott Harrison found meaningful work, just like you and I found meaningful work for what we're trying to do. You know, you can find meaningful work. It's just aligning your values and your purpose of what you want to do in this world with the, 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 the art that you create and, and bring into this world. Like that Scott is an artist with, with, you know, this charity water. I mean, literally, if you listen to the book, he'll, he's so creative and innovative and trying new things, but he wouldn't do that stuff if it wasn't something that he really cared about. You know, we wouldn't do the stuff that we're doing if it wasn't something that we really didn't care about, you know, like. Right. When, when he, when he cares about this work, um, you know, he thrives in it. That's why he's able to raise that much money. He thrives in this kind of environment. For him, it's valuable. It's meaningful for him, right? And uh, so for me, is um, if you have to think about whether you're afraid of a work that not, does not end, if even that thought enters your mind about what you're doing, right. that's not it. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree. That's my you. only if advice I, to if you. I, if, <laughs> if anyone can take away anything from, from, this, from this, uh, this episode is if you – Ask yourself, you know, is the work, is this work I need to be afraid of? It's not. That's not it. Yeah. Because it's just a definitive, like there's no way I'm 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 going to let this go. Right. Whatever, whatever makes you thrive and make you grow, you you have a knack for, you have a natural fit for whatever that, that is that you do. And that becomes meaningful to you. And when you yeah. do that, 
you have the energy and creativity to do to make even much better than anyone could imagine. And that's and, meaningful work. And and not and I couldn't agree more. Not only that, like picking back in on that of the concept of infinite work too, like helping people to find balance in their lives will be here long after you and I are gone. Like it's work that doesn't end literally like it is an infinite game like helping mm-hmm. humans to live a purpose-filled life is work that does not end as long as humans are around that that purpose exists so like it's my job will end at salesforce someday you know like salesforce will end someday um like i i it i'm not i mean i like that's not my meaningful work it's not work that doesn't end like and that's and that's really the meaning for me of don't be afraid of work that doesn't end Helping living a balanced life is work that will never end until we are gone. And then not only that, it'll continue on and helping other people long after we're gone. So like that's that's what work that doesn't end to me. It is purpose driven. Mm-hmm. It is mission. Right. It is it is it it is a it is it is meaningful work and helping to build meaningful relationships over the course of a lifetime and do make your dent in the universe in that area and and uh, and then let the next person pick up the flag and the next group of people and build a culture around it, all that other stuff. Right. Like that's, that's what, that's what, that's what we can do. That's what Scott Harrison's doing with charity water. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. he's, he is like, there will always be people that don't have clean water in this world. And if, and, and, and even if they do, like, there's another problem that we can help with other people, you know, like they're helping right. humans to live better lives is, is, you know, is, is an infinite game, right? Like that is right. work that doesn't end. So that stuff is, is meaningful. Yes. And meaningful, it's going to have different meaning to different people. And for, for Scott Harrison, you know, bringing water to, to the people in Africa has meaning to him. It may not have any meaning to you, but some right. other stuff will have meaning to you. And for us, it's about living the, the right, you, the, the life you're supposed to live is what we, uh, we think of meaningful. And right. for you, it could be different, right? For the readers out there, your meaningful work could be different, but that's, that's the beauty of it. it. It's like everybody has there. You have to find that which is you're made for and do that and enjoy the work that never ends. Exactly. Because you don't, you don't want it to end because it's so much fun. It's so fulfilling. Whatever, whatever the word you want to use it. I mean, I don't think there's enough word to properly describe what, what, what we are trying to say. But, you know, it's uh, it kind of give you a, a hint in a way. Yep. I uh, tr- tr- True's favorite saying of a painter's got to paint and uh, we're tacking on to a uh, <laughs> yeah, writer's got to write and a, and a beaver's got to dam. dam. <laughs> beaver must dam. Uh, you know, so uh, uh, find, find your dam in your wood that you can work on for the rest of your life and then pass it on to the next person to be like, okay, man, I'm out of here. Like, you know, I, I don't want to leave, but I got to, you know. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, great conversation. Uh, and the question we can leave for everybody is, uh, are you running away or at your meaningful work? And, um, and I think true answered that question pretty, pretty well with, if, if, you, if you don't feel like you are, then you are. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, you know, comment and, you know, share, share your comments. If you are working that, uh, living that meaningful work life and we'd love to connect and learn more. And if you're not, we're, we're here to help as well. So let us know. Okay. Sounds good. We'll see you next time. See ya.